the problem wasn't well defined. It, it is not well defined. There's no way of defining a priori what disaster relief is. It's something that we need to redefine pretty much on a daily basis. Kind of really understand kind of what is the mission of the project, who are the people that you're talking to, and kind of how to get to resolve things in the fastest way possible. Obviously, we started thinking about the idea of shelter. And when we put our technology and shelter together, we realized we were like just around the corner to have a more robust solution, a housing solution for a longer period of time. They're designed to be permanent housing. We started with the idea of, of shelter, and we realized that we were just a step away from making a permanent home that'll last two generations, three generations, four generations. The fact that there's this tradition in Puerto Rico and in a lot of Latin America where the families that are living now in their current houses have been living there since like their grandparents have been living there or their great-grandparents have been living there. So we want to give them the ability to keep living in this traditional way. The technology that we develop at Cerebot kind of has to do with uh, freeform space frames. So we patented a series of structural nodes that are super versatile and allows you to create forms initially of any shape and scale. One of the things that we realize is that free form actually kind of means an ability to adapt to complex circumstances as well. So in the case of, uh, of Puerto Rico, it's an incredibly uneven terrain. So there's no two sides alike. The fact that you need to put like a robust foundation system. So part of our adaptive or adaptive quality kind of within the space is like the ability to digitally model the terrain uh, through scanning picking uh, the relevant points in terms of foundation and then systematize the foundation slab. That allowed us to, to resolve the uh, environmental problem as far as like ground goes. The second problem it kind of has to do with assembly and accessibility to the site. So our, the first two pieces that we develop is like a very lightweight structure. So the whole uh, structure for a 500 foot home weights 1,000 pounds. That's a framing only. Just so you have an idea, it's like about like seven times lighter than regular wood framing, and it's about like 15 times lighter than a regular concrete uh, CMU uh, block construction. For the weight and the environmental weight of one typical solution, we can actually produce 15 houses of that kind. With that, the effort that it takes to do only one house, we can kind of multiply that uh, times 15. The ease of transportation, it was another huge factor. This system is based on self-assembly, so all of the pieces compiled together on site and without any heavy equipment. And the last component is ease of shipping. So we wanted to uh, fit the whole house, the whole framing of the house in the tightest possible uh, uh, shipping container. So for a house of 500 square foot, uh, we are actually kind of shipping in a box that is three feet by three feet by six feet tall. So that's like for 5,000 cubic feet of mass, we're kind of shipping in a box that is only 50 cubic feet. From pickup truck to pickup truck. In one pickup truck, we can actually fit two homes. As far as like showing the versatility of the system, we wanted to demonstrate a 500 square foot home that can be divided into a two room setup uh, and set up in actually kind of one day. The reality of the family is kind of coming back to their sides is much more complex than a single parents and one kid. We have like parents, grandparents, uh, three kids and so on. So we actually have like a much more complex family structure. So we wanted to demonstrate through our uh, uh, plan studies that we can actually adapt to kind of different uh, scenarios in terms of size of units and kind of and also kind of like plot a little bit of like a growth path of, of, over time. The radical use of technology in this project kind of has to do with all the logistics that are required to resolve a problem of this magnitude, especially kind of disaster relief. So all of our training in form actually pays off in our intelligence in logistics. Now, CyArk is a test bed of experimentation. We're kind of like constantly uh, putting our ideas on the table uh, and kind of having a, a very concrete discussion about that. We actually want to advance and create a new set of ideas. One of the most interesting things about CERG is like we're at the forefront of the confrontation between technology and architecture. 
Uh, so a lot of times we actually measure that confrontation and a lot of times we're actually gonna develop the technology itself and really kind of understanding kind of its relationship with current right now development.